Making the transition to 100% renewables is not only possible, it's also affordable and essential. It's really important right now that we get these messages out because New South Wales will make the transition to 100% renewables. It's not a question of if, but when. And the real question is, do we do it on our own time scale, using our own technology, generating jobs here in New South Wales, or do we wait around so that we do yet more damage to the environment, we do yet more damage to the climate, uh, and we lose those jobs? This is a, not just an economic question and a moral question. It is a question about what sort of an economy we hand over to our kids. That's why the Greens New South Wales are running a campaign for 100% renewables New South Wales, based around the ideas of possible, affordable and essential. We now know it's possible after a study from the University of New South Wales. Uh, the group there took the wind and sunshine records going back over the previous two years, looked at the amount of electricity that was used on the uh, grid uh, that connects the east and south of Australia together and re-ran in simulation what it would look like without coal-fired generators or gas-fired generators. The remarkable outcome was that nothing happened. The light stayed on, industry continued to operate, the uh, electricity grid remained reliable and stable. And despite the absolute worst predictions of people around Australia, we simply do not need coal and gas to keep our economy turning over. But, you know, that's just a bunch of university academics. You have to ask the question, well, you know, obviously universities, they're biased, they're always going to say that sort of stuff. What about the real people, the engineers? Well, the uh, former Minister for Energy, Martin Ferguson, in the previous Labor government, asked the Australian energy market operator, AEMO, to conduct a similar study, only make it much more difficult. Don't look backwards, look forwards. What would it look like in the future? AEMO is the organisation that's charged with keeping the lights on, minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, year to year. These are hard-nosed engineers. They don't have a commitment to renewable energy or any other form for energy source. I'm convinced that Martin Ferguson, being Martin Ferguson, thought, well, you know, you ask and they'll obviously come up and say, no, it's not possible because everybody knows renewable energy is somehow too weak. And anyway, the load's going to grow so much, it'd just be not a feasible proposition. Well, the engineers, the good folk at the Australian Energy Market Operator came up with an answer. The answer was straightforward. Yep, the lights will stay on, industry will continue to operate, we will be able to run a modern, advanced economy based on renewable energy without coal seam gas, without coal. The reality is, whichever way you look at it, the age of coal, the age of gas is coming to an end. So people say, all right, we'll concede, it's possible, but it's going to be incredibly expensive. It's going to bankrupt the state and drive us back to the Stone Age. Well, before we even contemplate the cost of a transition to 100% renewables, we should look at the cost of not making the transition. Uh, the, the first cost that's quite obvious is the stuff that comes out of the smokestacks of the coal-fired power stations laden with heavy metals, full of things called polyaromatic hydrocarbons, causing cancers, causing uh, nerve diseases, one estimate is about $800 million a year of real costs associated with the pollution from coal-fired power station. Health costs, people not being able to go to work, people dying, people being hospitalised. The second set of costs are those that are associated with subsidies that go into coal and gas-fired electricity. Hard to estimate because these things are difficult to quantify, but somewhere between $2 billion and $6 billion a year of subsidies going into the electricity industry, the fossil fuel electricity industry here in New South Wales. That money is in the form of support for low price coal and also in terms of the diesel fuel rebates in the coal mines. But it doesn't matter how big that subsidy is because the kicker is the cost of the greenhouse gas emissions. Every tonne of carbon dioxide that comes out of the smokestack of a power station adds an incremental boost to the globally warmed world. That gr those greenhouse costs have been quantified uh, and they vary enormously. They go from about $20 a tonne from the George Bush White House through about $200 a tonne from the previous Labor government in the United Kingdom 
and also Sir Nicholas Stern, through to about $1,000 a ton from one academic study I saw. But whatever the number is, these are real costs. These are bushfires. These are additional droughts. These are storms and cyclones destroying infrastructure, destroying homes, destroying crops. These are health costs of the spread of disease and people dying from extreme heat events. These are real and measurable costs. Not necessarily all in New South Wales and not necessarily all in the same year, but nonetheless costs that somebody has to bear. If you take the central figure of about $200 a tonne, multiply it by 60 million tonnes of carbon dioxide from the New South Wales electricity industry each year, that means our lifestyle is imposing a cost of about $12 billion a year. When you add all that up, that's about uh, of the order of $14, $16 billion a year of costs of inaction. What's the cost of action? Well, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the Beyond Zero Emissions study, they have it around 8 or $9 billion a year. I suspect that that study uh, could be better. We could do it more cheaply with modern technology. But nonetheless, the costs are going to be less than $10 billion a year over the 15-year period that it'll take us to make the transition here in New South Wales. A lot cheaper than the costs of inaction. A whole lot cheaper than the costs of inaction. But people say, well, still, it's a lot of money. Well, what else do we spend $10 billion a year on here in New South Wales? One thing we spend $10 billion a year on is this state's contribution to the national defence budget. The income tax paid by people here in New South Wales to the $30 billion annual Australian defence budget is about $10 billion. So it's actually cheaper than the amount of money we put into buying things like Abrams tanks and the Joint Strike Force F-35 fighters or the, the new submarines. What's going to make this state and this nation safer? Demonstrating to our neighbours that we are serious about addressing climate change or buying largely imported toys that threaten our neighbours uh, and cost a lot of money. I think it's pretty clear we are better off making the transition uh, and showing and becoming world leaders in that transition. So it's possible, it's affordable, but we also argue it's essential. It's essential because if we don't make the transition, this nation will hit the carbon wall. It's already beginning to happen. Imagine a scenario where the rest of the world turns around to Australia and says, hey guys, uh, not only do we not want your export coal anymore and your export gas, but also you can't continue to be the world's largest per capita emitters of carbon dioxide. At that point, Australia is forced to make the transition, forced to make the transition to a clean energy economy, forced to make the transition away from an economy based on export of fossil fuels, forced to make a transition on somebody else's time scale using somebody else's technology where the jobs will disappear overseas. And there are massive numbers of jobs to be found in the clean energy economy. One estimate is about 73,000 new jobs in 100% renewable New South Wales, building, manufacturing, installing, maintaining, administering the new energy technologies, not to mention research and development. And that's just for New South Wales alone. Imagine if we get into the export industries, we build the real economy that works not just for this generation but for the next generation based on exporting the expertise and some of the technologies. And what are we giving up to get to that, that huge opportunities associated with 100% with renewables? Well, in the coal-fired power stations in New South Wales, there's probably about 1,600 jobs. In the coal mines that support them, less than 5,000 jobs. Less than 6,600 jobs that we're trading in to get 73,000 new jobs. Now, one of our commitments as Greens is to make sure every single person working in the old fossil fuel industries has a job, a unionised job, a high paid job, a secure job in the new renewable energy economy. This is the ultimate challenge for Australia. Do we sit back and allow the rest of the world to determine our timescales? Do we sit back and say everything's absolutely fine with the fossil fuel industry even though the rest of the world is making the transition? 
Do we wait until we are told that we have to make the transition, losing the opportunities for export jobs, losing the opportunity even to manufacture for ourselves, losing the opportunity to develop the expertise that the rest of the world will so desperately need? Or do we do what the Greens say? Make the transition now, as quickly as possible, probably in about 15 years in New South Wales. By 2030, a commitment across all political parties that by 2030 we are out of fossil fuels. Because if we do that, we are not only building the economy of the future with jobs for young people that addresses the appalling rates of youth unemployment that exist in rural and regional New South Wales, but we're doing something even greater. We are building for ourselves, collectively, doing something which is for the common good. We are making ourselves stronger, not just by the material gains that we get from the transition, but by the sense of our self-value, by the sense of ourselves that we would create by that transition. So the transition to 100% renewables is possible, affordable and essential. But it's just not going to happen by a bunch of Greens MPs saying it should happen or even by me going around New South Wales and telling people it should happen. Even the legislation that we have before the New South Wales Parliament will not cause the transition away from fossil fuels. It's really up to every person in New South Wales to be part of this campaign. It's part of everybody recognising this is about our common future. It's about the collective good. It's about making the transition before we're told we have to make the transition. I believe these things are possible. I believe that they are possible because there is enormous goodwill and enormous intelligence in our society. Making sure that we are world leaders in the transition to 100% renewable energy not only makes sense, but it is a key component of a healthy society.